Are you familiar with the Drake equation? Drake equation tells us that there could be millions of planets that could harbor intelligent life, but we have found none. Venus and Mercury due to their proximity to the sun do not show any positive scenario where life could develop. And as we move beyond Mars, we have gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn where there is no true surface. Also due to their distance from the sun, they are outside of the habitable zone. While these huge planets disappoint us, their moons seem to catch the astronomers' attention. Some of their moons have a few appreciable properties highlighting the possibility of being habitable. In this episode, let's have a trip to the fourth largest moon and most volcanically active world of our solar system, Io. My name is Siddharth and you're watching The World of Science. This video is brought to you by Rocketeers, but more on this at the end. Since Io is on an average 628 million kilometers away from Earth, it would take us at least four years just to get into Io's orbit, plus additional time to land. It is one of the four Galilean moons of Jupiter that were discovered by Galileo Galilei in the 17th century. While it is the fourth largest moon in our system, it has the highest density of any moon. In terms of water content, it has the lowest amount of all astronomical objects in the solar system. Well, that is a piece of bad news for life. But let's look at some more data before concluding. If less water is a big problem, then wait for the volcanoes. Io is the most geologically active body in the solar system. It has over 400 active volcanoes. Sulfur dioxide released from these continuously firing volcanoes reaches a height of 500 km from the surface. Io's volcanoes are at times so powerful that they are seen with large telescopes on Earth. Io's remarkable activity is the result of a tug of war between Jupiter's powerful gravity and smaller but precisely timed pulls from two neighboring moons that orbit farther from Jupiter. They are Europa and Ganymede. Io's orbit, keeping it at 422,000 km from Jupiter, cuts across the planet's powerful magnetic field, thus turning Io into an electric generator. Io can develop 400,000 volts across itself and create an electric current of 3 million amperes. This current creates lightning in Jupiter's upper atmosphere. Most of the moons in the solar system are composed of icy crusts, but Io's crust is formed of silicate beneath which there is a molten core of iron and iron sulphide. The constant release of sulphur from the volcanoes gets deposited on the surface. Lava from the volcanoes flows down on the surface, forming various colorful patterns in shades of yellow, red, black and green. The surface of Io is filled with mountains, some of them reaching a height more than that of Mount Everest. With a radius of 1,821 kilometers and mass equal to 0.015 times that of Earth, it is a small celestial object with no water, fiery volcanoes and a cold environment having a maximum temperature of, wait for it, minus 143 degrees Celsius and a composition of 90% sulphur dioxide. If this is not enough, then there is an interesting phenomenon that happens each day. When Jupiter passes between Io and the Sun, there is no direct sunlight and thus Io is thrown into cold darkness with the temperature reaching minus 270 degrees Celsius. This low temperature causes the sulphur dioxide in the atmosphere to cool down and drop to the surface. This means the atmosphere collapses and settles down on the surface every day. A day on Io is nearly 1.7 times a day on Earth and each day the atmosphere collapses on Io for 2 hours. Just imagine what we will experience on reaching there. As the sunlight comes, the sublimation process starts and a new atmosphere is reborn. This is one of the strangest phenomena in our solar system. If we reach the surface, we have to be far away from hundreds of volcanoes and must be prepared for the collapsing atmosphere for two hours every day. No organic molecule has been detected on its surface. With no liquid water on the surface, water scarcity will be a huge problem for our crew if we wish to live there for a long time. Gravity on Io is one-fifth of that on Earth. Thus, it will be difficult to travel on the surface. Well, 
Sometimes the situation will be similar to that of our moon, but with a plot twist of occasional showers of hot lava and collapsing sulfuric atmosphere. Before moving ahead, tell me, what if you could build and launch your own rockets? Thanks to Rocketeers, now you can do that. Rocketeers make high-quality, affordable and solid-fuel-powered model rocket kits that even you can launch at your place up to the height of 500 feet. Wait, what? This is surely some desire fulfillment for all those who wanted to become rocket scientists but could not, or those who aspire to be one someday. They have also partnered with ISRO and created awesome merchandises to raise awareness about the works of ISRO as a pillar for space research in India. You can order these rocket kits and ISRO merchandise from their website rocketeers.in. Use our coupon code RWOS for an exclusive 15% off on all products. Link is in the description below. Known concept of life seems impossible on this tiny moon, but one should not lose hope. This is fine. Astrobiologist Dirk Schultz Makuk at Washington State University suggested that life on the surface may be impossible, but if you go down further into the rocks, it could be intriguing. We shouldn't categorize it as dead right away just because it's so extreme. Conditions on Io might have made it a friendlier habitat in the distant past. If life did ever develop on Io, there is a chance it might have survived to the present day. Computer models suggest Io formed in the region around Jupiter where water ice was plentiful. Io's heat combined with the resulting possibility of liquid water could have made life possible. There must have been quite a lot of water on Io shortly after formation, judging from the amount of water ice on Europa and Ganymede. Io is very violent and it tells us so much about the early formation of the planets and moons. It can be called the world of fire and lava. Io almost certainly could not support life as we know it, but that's not to say it couldn't harbor some unknown form of life. So how was your trip to Io with us? Let us know in the comments. If you want us to keep creating such content, could you please show your support using the super thanks option below? Even the smallest contribution you can make will go a long way. It's supporters like you that help us make science more fun and easy than it has ever been. Thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe to the world of science. Until next time, stay scientific.